Hey, it's Tim here. In this video, I'm going to show you really, really quickly how to start a performance recording and then get the performance recording workbook open. And we're just going to have a quick look at it. It's not a detailed dive, deep dive into the uh, performance recording workbook. This is just showing you how to do it in desktop. I'll do another video how to do it in server as well. Uh, but for now, let's get stuck in. Okay, so here I am in Tableau. All I'm going to do is I'm going to open the sample workbook here on the bottom left. If you don't see these, don't worry. Just grab any workbook whatsoever that you can get hold of. It's going to work exactly the same. Now, when you click on a workbook, when you open up a workbook, what it's actually doing is it's opening up a couple of bits of information. It's opening up the workbook file, which is essentially just XML. Then it's communicating with the data source. It's querying the data source. Then it's loading it. And once it's loaded, something called the VizQL engine actually renders all the visualization and puts all the information information you want on screen. So that's essentially what happens when you open a workbook. Now, when you're troubleshooting a workbook, sometimes maybe you've got slow performance. A performance recording is actually a really good way to sort of diagnose what's going on because what happens is essentially Tableau could be building a really complex query or you could have created a calculation that's causing absolute nightmares to databases and all your Tableau workbooks. So how do you find out how long each of these behaviors is taking? So for example, when I click on this little action over here, how do I find out the performance of that interaction? When I go over here to the right hand side and I start filtering on dates, how do I find out the load performance of that particular interaction? I could just look at it and sort of come to a conclusion that it's fast. Um, but how do you get some sort of quantitative numbers essentially for this behavior? Well, it's actually hidden up here in the help menu. Now, depending on whether you're on Windows or on a Mac, it looks slightly different, but it's essentially in the same place. I'm gonna head up here to the help menu. It's just behind my little annotation tool here. So if you go to help and you'll see here, there's an option to go to settings and performance. Once there, at the very, very end, there's something called starting a performance recording. And here's the important thing. Once you hit start, it started. You don't get some sort of visual callback on the screen to say, hey, it started. You don't get a recording icon. Nothing happens. You just click that button and now it's kicked off. There's nothing on screen that will tell you that it's kicked off. You just have to trust it's kicked off. OK, so now that you've done that, when you go back to help, the only way to know that it's actually kicked off is this will now say stop performance recording. OK, so that's how you know everything's kicked off. But for now, We've just started it. Now we want to do some sort of interactions. Now, what I've done is when I loaded this workbook, I purposely didn't go to other tabs. So you could see the load performance of those tabs. So I'm going to go here to product and it's going to have to load it. And then I'm going to go to customers and it's going to have to load that too. And it's going to go to shipping here and it's loading that too. And performance, it has to load that too. Forecast, it loads that very quickly. And the what if forecast is as such. Now that I've cycled through all of them, I should have some information in the recording about each of those. Now, what I'm going to do is go back to customers and I'm going to just sort of interact with the filters just by deselecting all. And this time I'll just select furniture, then I'll select technology. And you can see that the animation and everything sort of kicks in and select office supplies again. And that kicks in again. Last thing I'll do is a deselect corporate, then deselect home office, then deselect consumer, and then select all again just to bring everything back in. The reason I'm doing this is because some of these queries are going to be loading from the data source and some of them are going to be cached. Essentially, a cached load is, is like Tableau's already got the details. It's already remembered. So, for example, when I go to the shipping tab, this is a cached load because it already had information about that saved in its memory. So whenever you go back to a view that's already been previously loaded, it's not loading it from the data source. It's just loading it from its own memory. And now that we've done that, we go to help. We go to settings and performance and then we hit stop performance recording. And when you do that, nothing will happen immediately. But just trust that Tableau will eventually open a workbook. If you've got a slow computer, this will take a while, depending on how big your performance query was. But here we are. We've got the performance recording ready to go. And what you can see is you get this sort of it's it's not a greatly designed workbook, but it's actually pretty good. What you can tend to do is sort of take this information out and do your own thing with it. So just stop this looking confusing. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to close the actual one that I was using for my performance recording and make this large. Now, something people often don't realize is that this filter here at the top is set sometimes all the way over here. It's not always set exactly to the far left. And the reason that is, is because some interactions are so fast, they don't even sort of clock any time. So you'll see here that they set it to just 0.01 like that. And you can actually see the number of things that come in 
disappear. So those are things that sort of sort of don't matter. But if you want to see everything, just slide that to the left, and you can see this list of activities uh, gets a lot longer. Um, now, as we scroll down, you can actually see the things that took the longest. So connecting to the data source uh, took 0 0.62 seconds. That was actually the longest activity. Rendering the visualization was the next sort of, uh, you know, most sort of intensive tasks. And then as I scroll down, what you're typically actually analyzing is the query performance. So if I was to just go in here and select query performance, and uh, let's just say keep only and see if this applies um, to the whole web. And unfortunately, it doesn't filter the, um, it does, that's, that's really annoying. It doesn't filter the um, chart on the left. So let's see if we can um, set this to do that. So it will actually highlight it, but we won't actually see it. So I've managed to find one here, which is good. So now if I click on that, you'll actually see the query. And so what essentially is happening is here. If you're connected to a live database, let's say a SQL Server or Oracle or Snowflake, the query that Tableau is sending to the database is going to load in this box, okay? And this box here that we're coming from, was, uh, this box here that we're drawing from is essentially just ranking how long each activity took from slowest to the fastest. Now, you will register times that are absolutely ridiculous in here because, for example, this took 0, 0.00. That's just because the query was ex exceptionally quick. So that's actually probably why they load this workbook like this because they're trying to filter out sort of inane tasks that don't really take any any sort of amount of time. So now, this detailed view is actually quite a nice new addition. What it essentially does is it basically shows you a chronological sort of order of what's going on from the moment you started the step the test until basically the finish so here you've got um, different depths and um, i believe the depths are just sort of different uh, tracks uh, think of them it actually says here the fact the depth view shows the high level activities at, um, at the top activities lower down are spawned by high level activity so essentially whatever you're doing in row one is activating some of the subsequent rows and so on and so forth. And so the stuff at the bottom here is sort of activated by stuff at the top. So the performance recording here, um, and you've got on hover action. This this performance recording actually started back there and stopped there. That's why it's sort of a really, really long line. It's not because it's taking up a lot of resources. It's just a Gantt chart showing you what's going on. Uh, the render activities, these are the ones at the top. Executing the queries, sort of 303 um, milliseconds or something like that, or activities. Although the processor time, sorry, here is 0 0.9. So all of this information is available to you. Now, this is not an interesting workbook. It's just a normal one. If we were to connect to a live database, this, this particular sheet would get more interesting because you'd get more uh, vitals about what's going on. Anyway, I've, I've ranted enough. <laughs> Anyway, I've rambled enough about this. Hopefully you find this useful. I just wanted to show you how to get at the performance recording. And then maybe in another video, we'll do a deeper dive into performance recording itself and how to optimize performance for workbooks. So nevertheless, that's how to open up the performance recording uh, window. Now you're done. You can actually save this workbook if you want to uh, and you know take it wherever you want. Another thing people do is they actually don't bother saving the workbook, but they take an extract of this um, particular data source. And what they do is they memorize the uh, particular uh, thing that they were doing. So they'll open the workbook, they'll click on a specific uh, set of different things, and then they'll capture all the details. And then what they'll do is they'll come back to that workbook once they've performance optimized it, do exactly the same steps, and essentially just see how long all the activities take and see, okay, what have they optimized? What have they reduced? And sort of compare the two. With tools like Tableau Prep, you can absolutely go down and maybe interrogate that further. But nonetheless, it's, you sort of don't need to really worry about that. Um, this is, is enough, really. This workbook is enough to do everything you need to do. And yeah, you can just go ahead, uh, save it. We'll save it here as a demo um, uh, performance recording. I'll save it to my desktop, demo perf recording. And now that's done, we're going to hit save. And that's it. That's a performance recording done, and we can call that a day. Now, I've obviously still got the actual workbook open. If I go over here to the right-hand side, you'll see that it's there. Um, but that's it. You can do this on Tableau Server. I'll show you that in another video. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.